One drop is all it takes. Whether it's snuck into a drink in the middle of a fancy cocktail party, quietly administered into a hospital IV, or sprayed through a perfume bottle, poisons have been a sneaky way to kill since forever. And yet, we use them every day, whether it's in traps for pests, weed killer for gardens, or even medicines for our sick. Poisons are something we simply cannot escape. They are a fact of life, but that doesn't mean they're also not highly dangerous. Even in small quantities, some toxins are as nasty as they are fatal, capable of ravaging the body until their host suffers a cruel, painful, and miserable demise. But which ones are they? Where do they come from, and which ones are at the top of the food chain? So sit down, grab a drink, and let's find out. Actually, you might want to leave the drink in case it's been poisoned by someone. When it comes to poisons, you don't get much more effective or older than cyanide. As a naturally occurring chemical found among plants, it has been used in warfare and poisoning for some two millennia. You can even get trace amounts of cyanide from the seeds of fruits like apples. It's also almost undetectable, with its only giveaway being the distinctive smell of bitter almonds, but it's not always present. Cyanide in all its forms has a lot of uses, but everyone knows it is a poison. We say various forms because one of the key elements of cyanide that makes it so effective is its versatility. It can be found in solid, liquid, or gas forms, and it can enter the body via water, air, or through food. The other important thing to note about cyanide is that it's fast. Cyanide can kill a person incredibly quickly. The Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health stipulates that a lethal dose of cyanide gas can be fatal in seconds, whilst the ingestion of a solid cyanide salt takes mere minutes. It mainly affects the heart and central nervous system in some very nasty ways. Headaches, agitation, confusion, lethargy, nausea, and vomiting are all common minor symptoms. More serious symptoms include fluid buildup in the lungs, seizures, comas, red discoloration of the skin, and of course, death. Now, there are antidotes to it. However, if you receive a fatal dose, that's not likely to matter, as you won't make it to the hospital in time for them to test it and administer the antidote. But there are countermeasures to non-lethal doses that will help the symptoms. But if a person does survive cyanide poisoning, they may develop psychiatric symptoms that are similar to those in survivors of heart attacks. One of the most infamous instances when cyanide was used was the Jonestown Massacre of 1978, where Jim Jones coerced members of his cult to drink flavor aid laced with cyanide. In total, over 900 people, including children, would die. Another was the Tylenol poisonings of 1982, where Tylenol capsules laced with potassium cyanide originating in Chicago killed seven people and caused panic throughout the USA. You may have heard of ricin in the past, but just because this highly potent toxin comes from castor beans doesn't mean that it's any less deadly. In fact, ricin is considered one of the deadliest poisons on Earth. It's also pretty common because the plant it comes from is used to make castor oil, and ricin is simply a byproduct. The way that ricin works is pretty unique. When it enters a cell, it stops them from generating the proteins that they need, which kills them. But ricin causes a chain reaction of this kind of cell death, which affects the whole body. Ricin is so deadly because you don't need much of it to cause this cascading effect. In fact, it's reported that one milligram of ricin is enough to kill an adult. There is no cure, and it kills quickly, with death occurring within 36 to 72 hours. Symptoms range depending on how ricin enters the body. If breathed in, symptoms often hit within four to eight hours. They include a fever, cough, nausea, and chest tightness, which worsens into sweating, fluid building up in the lungs, low blood pressure, and respiratory failure, which kills you. If ingested instead, a slightly different kind of horror awaits, including vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration, seizures, organ failure, uh, which again kills you. If you survive for three days after first coming into contact with ricin, it's likely that you will live but those three days will be some of the worst of your life. Ricin is often considered a common weapon used by terrorists because it's easy to make, it's abundant, and it's cheap. It can even be aerosolized in powdered form, it doesn't smell, and you don't need much of it. In many ways, it is the perfect bioweapon. In 2014, a Mississippi man pled guilty to attempting to mail powdered ricin to the at the time US President Barack Obama. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison, showing how seriously the authorities take it when ricin is involved, and also the president. Arsenic is a heavy metal that occurs naturally on Earth, but whilst it comes in an organic form, its inorganic form is highly toxic to humans, with its most dangerous form coming from industrial use. 
The runoff from factories, where arsenic is used to make things like glass, electronics, and alloys, can get into water sources, which then hurts communities downstream. The acute dangers of arsenic are well known today, but it wasn't always so. Owing to its utility in a bunch of different products, it saw extensive use in Victorian households. It was used as a poison, yes, but also for medicine, wallpaper, and even makeup. The real danger when it comes to arsenic is that it's so toxic that it can kill you in about a hundred different ways. Around 140 million people in 70 countries today are drinking arsenic-contaminated water, which is above the WHO's safe limit. People every year suffer from quick arsenic poisoning when they ingest a lot of highly contaminated water, with symptoms showing within 30 minutes. The most common ailments are abdominal pain, diarrhea, and vomiting. This can be followed by a numbness or tingling feeling, muscle cramps, chest pain, fluid in the lungs, damage to the brain, seizures, liver necrosis, and death. It is no better to be poisoned by arsenic over time, though. Long-term exposure to lower but still dangerous levels of arsenic lead to all kinds of medical complications. Firstly, there's the effects on the skin, which can change color, form lesions or hard patches, and even cause skin cancer. But skin cancer isn't the only cancer arsenic will give you, as it can result in cancers of both the lungs, bladder, and kidneys. It can also contribute to heart conditions, pulmonary diseases, diabetes, and developmental issues. It's even worse for young children, infants, and fetuses, as long-term exposure can disproportionately affect them too, leading to debilitating health conditions early in life. There are effective medical treatments for short-term arsenic poisoning, but the long-term conditions are extremely difficult to reverse. In arsenic's case, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Ensuring that people have access to clean drinking water is the most important measure to take, but with many millions of people suffering every year from arsenic-induced ailments, it has a very long way to go. There isn't a scientific consensus on which substance is the most toxic, but they all agree on one thing, and that's that botulinum is up there with the worst of the worst. Botulinum toxin is produced by the bacteria Clostridium botulinum and often leads to a form of poisoning known as botulism. And it is no joke, being 10,000 times more potent than the sarin nerve agent that Saddam Hussein used on his own people. The way the botulinum gets you, it's also pretty gruesome. It's a neurotoxin, first and foremost, so it directly targets the central nervous system once it's in your body, stopping your muscles from being able to contract. Believe it or not, this has its uses, as oh, when it's used in plastic surgery, it's known as Botox. When the toxin is injected by a medical professional into the face, it paralyzes those muscles, and this is why people who get Botox sometimes have smoother features, but also sometimes have trouble making expressions. But this can also happen to your whole body if you happen to be one of the unfortunate handful of cases every year that contract the pathogen. It starts with fatigue, weakness, blurred vision, and vertigo. Soon comes difficulty swallowing or speaking, then a progressive paralysis of the muscles, which eventually causes respiratory paralysis and death. You essentially suffocate inside your own body. Thanks to modern medical treatments, the CDC reports that fewer than five of every 100 people die when they contract botulism, but that's only if it's caught early. Even with substantial hospital time, many never fully recover, even passing away from related conditions later. There is an antitoxin, but it can only stop the toxin spreading further. It cannot reverse damage already done. That means the moment somebody gets it, they're on a timer. But how do people and animals even get the bacteria in their systems in the first place? Well, botulism is usually associated with unsafe food production practices, but it can be contracted through wounds, inhalation, or in water. And it takes its toll every year. In 2023, there were 112 cases of botulism across Europe. In June 2024, the largest botulism outbreak in Russia for 30 years left 145 people hospitalized. An outbreak in California among its avian population has led to the deaths of nearly 100,000 birds. It's a serious toxin that leads to a serious death. A final poison is another one that paralyzes you first. And this is tetrodotoxin, more commonly known as TTX. You remember cyanide? Well, TTX makes it look like baby aspirin. TTX is a biotoxin, 1,200 times more toxic to humans than cyanide, and there is no known antidote. You either get better or you die. And like cyanide, it's pretty fast. Death can occur in as little as 20 minutes after it's first introduced to the body, depending on the person and the amount. As a general rule, though, death follows on average between four and eight hours after exposure. However, if you do make it through the first 24 hours, you're likely to make a full recovery, so at least there's that. So, where does it come from? 
Well, that'd be animals. For a long time, it was believed to only be present in certain species of pufferfish like the fugu, you know, the one that people in Japan die from every year trying to eat. But it's been found in other land and water-based animals since like mollusks, worms, frogs, and arthropods. This has led researchers to theorize that the toxin is acquired by animals over time through the food chain as animals with high levels of the toxin saw it diminish when fed on diets that contained no TTX. But how does it kill you? Well, like the others, it's pretty grisly. It's most commonly introduced to the body through ingestion, like from that delicious sounding fugu. The first stage is characterized by a tingling and numbness in the mouth, which then spreads to the face. Common symptoms then include sensations of lightness or floating, headaches, dizziness, weakness, difficulty moving or speaking, and abdominal pain. Other symptoms are the body's way of attempting to expel the toxin through sweating, vomiting, and diarrhea. But it's stage two where this goes from a case of fugu poisoning to fatality. It targets the nervous system, slowly paralyzing a person, starting with their extremities and eventually leading to respiratory failure. But it could just as easily give you a seizure, put you in a coma, and cause abnormal heart rhythms, which could all kill you before that. Next time, just stick with the sushi.